What's going on defensively with Bayern Munich? They continue to shoot themselves in the foot, conceding inside the first minute against Augsburg this weekend and also in injury time to throw away the 2-1 lead that they had constructed thanks to goals from Lewandowski and Serge Gnabry. So another two points dropped, Janish. Uh, it's a good job they've got Lewandowski going the other way because at the back it's falling apart. Well, it is, and you just mentioned, I mean, Bayern Munich uh, uh, defensively over the years so sound they concede first 30 seconds and then last 30 seconds of the game or stoppage time as well and uh, 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 Sula gets injured he was the innocent bystander in on that first goal uh, that Marco Richter has scored but uh, Niko Kovac has to pick his uh, st uh, back four I mean he doesn't know what the best one is you have two World Cup winners in Benjamin Pavard and Luca Hernandez uh, you have Kimmich who sometimes plays as a right back sometimes plays as a holding midfielder this time he was a right back you have Alaba who didn't play for Austria internationally because of injury, and who's the one that comes in for the injured uh, Sula? It's Alaba, it's not Boateng. So that tells you everything you need to know about Boateng as well. So I think at a club like Bayern Munich, usually these things are settled long before the season starts. Take away an injury or two, you normally know. So that transition for Luca Hernandez because of injury and, and Pavard, it's been difficult for them, and I think that's part of the reason. Only two clean sheets, and really against Augsburg team, I mean, uh, they're one of the worst in the league in terms of uh, conceding goals. One in the first minute, one in the last minute, that's, that's unacceptable. We've seen this a number of times already in the Bundesliga season. I mean, I remember the game at Paderborn where they were, they were dominant and away from home. They had the opportunity to put the team to bed and they didn't manage to do that, almost let them back into the game. Here they did let Augsburg back into the game when they had chances to kill it off. Lewandowski continues to be the man they turn to, scoring yet again. Bundesliga joint record uh, first eight games of the season in which he scored 12 times. I mean, without him, they'd be struggling, wouldn't they? Uh, the best striker in the world. I mean, how long are we going to uh, tiptoe around that, right? Because you're going to say, well, it's Messi, it's Ronaldo, you're the big names out there. I mean, Lewandowski consistently for club over the years. This is, the, this is you know, last three, four, five, six, seven years. I mean, he scores, obviously, did it for Dortmund, did it for Bayern Munich, uh, and the international break scored a hat-trick against Latvia. Yeah, it's not a big team, but you still have to score against them. Against North Macedonia, he hasn't scored, but set up both goals as well, right? So the only thing left for Robert Lewandowski is to score in the big tournaments consistently, right? Um, two or three goals to get Poland to that next level. But in terms of Bayern Munich, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Robert Lewandowski, I mean, we're talking massive crisis for Bayern Munich right now. Uh, the magnifying glass probably rightly so, will be on the back line in terms of selection going forward. But up until this point in the season, it's all been about, oh, is Thomas Muller going to start over Philippe Coutinho? Again, we saw Coutinho being picked ahead of Muller only a few minutes in the game. Yes, and Coutinho has been playing well, uh, transitioned very well to the Bundesliga, and look at what Serge Gnabry is doing. Unbelievable. I almost forgot about uh, Arjen Robben, the goal he scored today coming inside. Uh, you know, to the far post, so he's been absolutely wonderful. If you're Thomas Muller, you're seriously really looking for a new club. You think so? As, as far as January is concerned, this Well, I don't know if it's January, but I, I, I just think that uh, after complaining about his playing time, here comes the game away to Augsburg, a good opportunity for Niko Kovac to maybe play him, and he started on the bench. Uh, hmm, not looking good. Do you think that they'll have enough to get it done over the course of the season? Yes, t I, I think so, because look at everybody else. Borussia Dortmund, we thought with their depth in every position, they're going to be much, uh, much better. They had a tough start. Leipzig has faltered here and there, so it's competitive everywhere. But Bayern Munich will find a way. They just always do. Champions League next. Big improvements, I imagine, though, would be needed if they're to really fancy themselves at a long run in that competition. Yes, I think they served a warning. Uh, Serge Gnabry was absolutely wonderful since we've been talking about him against Spurs, of course. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, looking at, this is not your normal Bayern Munich where you think immediately, if you ask me about favorites to win it, you say, oh, Bayern Munich is always there. No, still, even with that result against Spurs, I don't think uh, they're good enough. OK, well, we'll see if they can make those improvements necessary. Certainly, it's at the back that's costing them at the moment. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.